Now, the left always want to tell us how tolerant they are, except, of course, when it comes to Israel. And now more than 20 acts have withdrawn from the 2022 festival over a sponsorship deal it has with the Israeli embassy. Joining me now is David Adler. He's the president of the Australian Jewish Association. David, thank you for your time. What does this boycott say about the left's total intolerance towards Israel? Um, well, what a surprise that we should see within the arts community, within the left, within the Greens activists that are there, within uh, some of the other components that they should be uh, anti-Israel. And frankly, Corey, we need to call it out for what it is. This is anti-Semitism. Uh, Israel is the only Jewish state uh, in the world. Um, there are many territorial disputes. There are countries that have been involved in various conflicts. Um, we have massive human rights issues in China and North Korea and elsewhere, and yet the only country in the world where there is an organised uh, campaign of boycott is against Israel. Now, that's not a coincidence. Uh, it has a very, very ugly history, as you would well know. Uh, the Nazis had a history, of course, of boycott of Jewish businesses and uh, Jewish services. And those that have been involved in this campaign should frankly hang their heads in shame. It's a disgrace. Uh, it's contrary to those that support uh, human rights. And uh, frankly, I think we need laws in this country to deal with it more firmly. Well, that'd be um, an interesting challenge because we've seen overseas, uh, places like in the UK where the Labor Party there, it's been dealing with a huge anti-Semitism problem for many years. They, they elected True. Jeremy Corbyn as their leader, for, for example. Uh, are we seeing that size or movement here, which is directly against the uh, Jewish state um, and against the Jewish people? We're seeing it uh, in some parts of our politics. I mean, to, to his credit, uh, Anthony Albanese uh, has agreed with Scott Morrison that Australia should adopt what is the widest, uh, most accepted definition of anti-Semitism formulated by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. But there is one political party which has rejected it, and uh, it should surprise no one to learn that that's the Greens. The Greens have a terrible track record. So where the Greens isn't so powerful in the UK, that sort of sentiment uh, infiltrated the Labor Party there. Uh, our Labor Party is, is not as bad as the Labor Party in the UK, but the Greens uh, certainly present a problem, and they, um, by rejecting the accepted definition of anti-Semitism, uh, have really consolidated their reputation as being anti-Semitic. Yeah, David, I have to tell you, I've sat in that chamber with the Greens and listened to some mm. of the vile filth that they sprout. It is a spout. It is just appalling. Now, you mentioned the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Um, now, that's something that is a bipartisan here from Labor and Liberal. You've made that point. Tell us what yes. it's about and why is it so important? Well, it's, it's very important because it is an internationally accepted uh, definition and it's an important step in order to address a problem. You need to define it. So that, that IHRA definition uh, does that. And in addition to defining what anti-Semitism is, it gives a series of working examples. And the thing that's got the left of politics really upset is it distinguishes critically um, where uh, Israel fits into that scheme. So, for example, you can criticise Israel in the same way as you criticise any other country if you dis disagree with the actions of the government or any other policy. Um, by all means, criticise. But if you single out Israel as uh, completely different, has to comply with a completely different set of standards, then you are crossing a line. And that is crossing the line into anti-Semitism. So if Israel is saying, uh, according to the campaign, that it should be boycotted and it is the only country in the world that should be boycotted for its existence, then uh, that certainly crosses the line. And it, it's important that Australia um, 
not only uh, adopts this definition in principle, but that it makes it policy. And we think it's very important that it's implemented uh, in our educational institutions, universities and schools, and also the media. We've arranged for a question on notice for the ABC. Will they accept the definition? Because we think there's a problem uh, in the ABC and we're waiting for their answer. Make sure you come on the show and discuss their answer with you. That's something we have Happy in common. To. But what about this? You make the point that you should be able to criticise Israel just like you can any other government and politicians, and we should be able to criticise individuals. But I've been uh, accused of anti-Semitism when I've said that I don't like how George Soros is conducting his business and influencing politics around the world. I thought that, you know, it's a fairly reasonable comment. But what's happened? We had this week Harry Potter actress Emma Watson. She was accused mm -hmm. of anti-Semitism for an Instagram post that expressed solidarity with Palestine. Now, personally, I'd like to see I have some solidarity with J.K. Rowling, who's been at the, you know, the bad end of the transgender activist. But for the life of me, I couldn't see this as an anti-Semitic post. Am I missing something here? Uh, the context. Um, she was supporting the BDS campaign, and that's that's the important context. Let me let me tell you also, we have a problem with George Soros. He funds all sorts of things that we object to that are contrary to the interests of the Jewish community in Israel. Now, Emma Watson is an interesting case study because she describes herself as a feminist. Fair enough. But you consider this. In the whole of the Middle East, where are women's rights the most protected? Uh, Israel has had a female prime minister and, indeed, uh, the most likely cause of traumatic injury or death to a woman in Gaza is not as a result of the co a conflict with Israel. It's as a result of honour attacks, the Islamic honour attacks within the mm. families. So um, the context is everything when it comes to these quick little memes on uh, social media. And if you're a feminist or if you support... Um, gay rights or these other leftist causes, environmental protection, and you overlook uh, all the things that are happening around Israel and only criticise Israel, then uh, your judgment, your principles, um, what you're really motivated by um, is legitimately criticised. Yeah, it's you, it makes an excellent point there. I've heard the Greens in particular join up with some of the most militant Islamic states to talk about condemning Israel, and yet they won't say one word about how you know the gay people in those states are treated. It's just appalling. David Adler, mm. thank you very much for uh, joining me on Inside the News tonight. I really appreciate your time, and all the very best for 2022. Thank you, Corey, and keep up your uh, great work.